We'll be devoting our entire program to an investigation into an appalling case of corporate thuggery and deception. We'll be revealing acts of harassment, lying, even cover-up by Australia's most profitable company. A company which can make or break your business, Telstra. Because every time you make a local phone call, you totally rely on Telstra for it to get through. If the phones don't work, you go broke. And if that sounds too simple, we're about to show you a number of small businesses which have been destroyed by constant phone problems. When they asked Telstra for help, they were lied to, bullied by lawyers and Telstra executives. In some cases, their calls were secretly bugged. But it goes further, as John Hanrahan discovered when he looked into the way a model corporate citizen does business. Steve Brady runs a car rental business in Brisbane and depends heavily on the telephone. For five and a half years, he's been plagued with problems. Mainly what happens is the client on the other end rings, uh, dials a number, and the phone rings as far as they're concerned, but it doesn't ring here. They also get the recorded message, this number is no longer connected. Um, the phones here, instead of going ring, ring, go dink. So if you're not close enough to them, you don't hear it. This is a summary of all the problems we've had. Started. When Telecom refused to admit there was a problem, Steve started keeping a log. Some days, as you can see from the larger paragraphs, it's worse. It keeps going, and here's a day here where we had so much, we in the end gave up and put the Steve Brady and others like him call themselves cot cases, casualties of telecom. Telecom's initial reaction to their complaints has often been to deny there's a problem. Oh, the most famous one is, is the one that was given to me personally twice, but had I considered that one of our competitors was coming into the office when we weren't in it, leaning over the desk and reprogramming our phone so all the calls went to him. Here's the other one where they've asked uh, women if they're wearing nylon underwear because nylon underwear will make the phones go haywire. What you're about to see is evidence of a systematic, endemic, and arguably malicious campaign by Australia's largest non-private organisation against a number of Australian small businesses. The campaign has cost the small businesses, in total, tens of millions of dollars, closed some of them, and seriously affected the health of individuals involved. In the course of this investigation, we've come across scores of small business people with Telstra horror stories. We probably lost about $500,000 uh, in revenue directly due to uh, telecom network faults. Financially, we're all but ruined. We don't own a thing except the registered business name. We had no business to sell. We were left with no business to sell. We've lost all our properties, and the total of six that belong to us and our company have gone, plus my own mother's house. The three businesses within the structure, we're in party hire, jukebox hire and catering. Uh, we've lost the business, we've lost our income, our livelihood. <laughs> lost a lot of our personal possessions, uh, my wife had an inheritance, she's lost that. Uh, we have a lot of antiques, we've been flogging those off at auction. If Telecom had resolved the Perton Smith's complaints, the family might still be intact. Telecom's refusal to acknowledge their problems has brought the family to the point of collapse. My son has uh, been, on his 21st birthday, I had to stop him from trying to hang himself. Uh, my younger daughter, who's uh, 15, she's not showing anything at the moment, but she's, uh, she's, been, she's been hurt a lot. You couldn't put a price on what's happened to the children and the animals and the people. What about you? Uh, I'll be okay if they're okay, but we have nowhere to live. We have nothing left. There's nothing left that anyone can take. So I guess that's good news. The telecommunications watchdog Ostel conducted an inquiry into Telstra's treatment of its customers. In a scathing report, it called Telstra a less than model corporate citizen. That was last year, and now a former Ostel executive, Amanda Davis, is adamant that things have not changed. Corporate thuggery is the expression that comes to mind. My legal cost at the moment has cost me $170,000. I lost my wife of 20 years. Um, she walked out um, with the stress. Um, Alan Smith, who's struggling to run a holiday camp in Victoria, has been fighting Telstra for seven years. I haven't got left what it would to buy a, a suburban home in Melbourne, and it's cost me $1.2 million. 
Because of Telstra's stonewalling tactics, Alan Smith resorted to the Freedom of Information Act to access documents for his compensation claims. Telstra's supposed to supply them within 30 days, but it's often taken 90, and they might just as well not have bothered. These are the type of FOIs I've got, like that, one after the other. And the In Alan Smith's case, Telecom's delaying tactics had a devastating effect. Ten days after my appeal time had elapsed, Telstra supplies me 700 documents, and three of the documents state that Mr Smith's testing on his service proved that these calls, these test calls did not work. Test calls unsuccessful. I gave up tests. Unsuccessful. What we've got to realise here is that we are dealing with a large number of documents. I mean, Steve Black is Telstra's media man. Well, there have been some criticisms of us, both by the Commonwealth Ombudsman uh, and by the claimants themselves, of our performance in respect of our FOI. We've accepted those criticisms, we've acted on the recommendations of the Commonwealth Ombudsman and we have put in place new processes to ensure that those problems don't keep occurring. Telecom's new ads are warm and friendly, but legal correspondence which we've obtained shows a very different attitude to customer complaints. Their solicitors, Freehill, Hollingdale and Page advised, not to directly or indirectly admit liability or fault on the part of Telecom. Did the corporation adhere to that legal advice by one of the leading law firms in Australia? At that time, uh, there was an issue there with, uh, with us dealing with the law firm, and, and that may well have been the situation at that time. So you're saying that this, this particular advice is no longer adhered to by the corporation? What I'm saying to us is there's been substantial changes in the whole uh, basis on which the corporation acts. But have they changed? People who deal with Telstra's victims think not. They will do anything, throw any amount of money, task forces, lawyers, at resisting um, a reasonable sit around the table and come to a settlement. After the break, we'll meet more unhappy customers and hear how the corporation resorted to lies. They lied to the Ombudsman, they lied to the police, they lied to the Minister, they lied to the Senators. Anne Garms used to run a theatre restaurant in Brisbane until her telephone problems almost sent her to the wall. Like other Telstra casualties, she resorted to FOI in her battle to win compensation. When the documents arrived, 50,000 of them, they showed that Telecom had been lying. Every time I lodged a complaint with an external agency, Telecom then lied to them. They lied to the Ombudsman, they lied to the police, they lied to the Minister. At the height of her battle with Telstra, Anne suspected her phone was being tapped. I had complained to the Ombudsman, to the Australian Federal Police and to the Minister that Telecom was in fact listening and taping our phone calls. Telecom denied that at all times. In fact, the FOI documents revealed Telecom had taped thousands of calls and they'd been listening to Anne's conversations for some time. And when Melbourne businessman Colin Turner complained to Telecom, they lied to him too in writing. The Telecom policy uh, was to tell uh, the uh, casualties of telecom people and difficult network fault people like myself that they had no liability or responsibility to pay any compensation whatsoever. Questions of liability, what has Telstra said to you? They've actually lied. Deborah Dawson's husband Gary runs a pest control business in Melbourne. Like many others, they were told in writing that telecom was not liable under the law. But the truth was, the law had been changed two years previously. In 1991, those immunities were withdrawn and Telecom were answerable. Does Telecom or Telstra and its new guys um, lie to its customers? Well, tel Telecom and its old guys and Telstra and its new guys does not lie to, it, to its customers. I guess there, there could be an occasion where, where somebody does something that, uh, uh, that the company wouldn't countenance. I think that was an amazing error to make two years after the Act was changed and this is a person in a management role with Telstra. Putting this in writing, no less. Clearly that person was not aware of, uh, uh, of the implications of the new Act, and that person responded in accordance with the, uh, uh, the requirements of the old Act. So have you taken this back now to Telstra and, and put this in front of them to say that you now know that they are liable? Uh, yes, um, and when we asked them where he got his information, he finally told us we could buy a copy of the Act for $197 if we were interested. Brian and Denise Love are another small business couple who say Telecom ruined them. And, like other victims, they had to resort to FOI to fight their case. 
Telecom's own correspondence revealed its defeat. You would find things that conversations you had had with Telecom where they were saying you were wrong.